There are many organizations supporting efforts to increase compassion in our community. We talked to many of them about why compassion is important and how to help with their efforts. My name is Tom Williams. I'm an attorney with Stolkeen and Ogden, but I'm also co-host with for the Partnership for Compassion at Louisville. Um, I've been part of the coordinating circle for the work since we've started in uh, November 11th of 2011. Uh, the vision for Compassion at Louisville is a community becoming more and more compassionate and our uh, mission is to nurture and champion the growth of compassion. We ask the question, uh, what does compassion want for Louisville? So how does that apply to kids in schools? Um, we know that everybody has compassion that lives within them and that really you just need to experience it. So, so our hope is that um, school children will feel encouraged and empowered to come up with interesting and fun projects, creative projects um, that are compassionate and that they'll um, seek us out for support, encouragement, empowerment. Um, we want to shine light on your work uh, and share your work with other people who are trying to do the same things to, give, to build, bring them encouragement as well. One of our key values is inclusion. So we say that anybody who wants to do more of the work of compassion is welcome. So children are especially welcomed. Um, empowerment, you know, compassion's not pity. So this is about helping you become empowered to make changes and help the world as you're able. Uh, we don't have a political agenda. We're transparent. And we're also universally positive. So we say the best criticism of the bad is the practice of the better. If you see people that aren't being compassionate, instead of criticizing them, we ask that you just be more and more compassionate and practice your compassion. Um, the work that we're doing is against no one, it's just for compassion. Um, we're also keen on paying it forward, so if you make a recipient of, of goodwill and good deeds, um, we ask you, you don't have to pay it back to anybody, we want you just to pay it forward to other people. So we're also about abundance, awareness, understanding, intention, and social innovation and the idea club especially is is all about social innovation it's about ideas it's about filling the gap and seeing where the needs are so um, so that's what the vision mission and values of compassionate Louisville are and we hope um, anybody in any school will feel welcome to to get involved and if you need help contact us okay. uh, I'm Brenda Frank I'm a special assistant to Mayor Fisher and when Mayor Fisher became uh, mayor, his first uh, act of duty or one of his major initiatives was to make Louisville the most compassionate city in the world. So now how you do that, we don't really know. But, uh, the first thing we did was to create the Mayor's Give a Day Week of Service. And what that does, that gives everybody in the city of Louisville, every youth, uh, all ages, an opportunity to do something for someone during the, the Mayor's Week of Service. During that week, you can go to mygiveaday.com and you can check out the different ways that you can participate. There, you can see the different projects that are listed. You can uh, go in and you can say, I want to be a volunteer to one of those projects. Or, as many of you youth do and many of the school uh, and grades do, they actually create their own projects and then they report those. So it's just a, it's an opportunity for people to learn how to volunteer, how to get, uh, if they've never volunteered, uh, it makes it easy for them, and then the goal is that you don't just stop volunteering during that one week. You volunteer throughout the whole year. So we're hoping that the Mayor's Give a Day Week of Service is just the beginning of making Louisville the most compassionate city in the world. You know, Muhammad Ali is known as such a compassionate um, individual around the world, of course, and uh, very very compassionate person who actually met the Dalai Lama for the first time in 2003. So he is planning on coming to Louisville to meet the Dalai Lama um, in May, 10 years later. Um, at the Ali Center, one of the six principles that he really embodied throughout his life was giving. So you can see throughout the exhibits that Muhammad Ali was really a compassionate individual and that sort of giving did not just start when he retired from the ring. He was doing it all along throughout his life while he was living here in Louisville. So we're really excited that uh, these two compassionate men of the world uh, can once again meet and really inspire our youth to sort of follow in their footsteps. Well, as the Kentucky Humane Society, we hope that students and actually all people would have a humane attitude towards all animals. 
Um, we deal with particularly dogs and cats, but the attitude of being a humane and compassionate person needs to translate to all animals. Um, things that people can do is just volunteering their time with different animal groups. Um, and students are welcome to do that with us. You do have to be at least 14 to do that, but um, we have lots of students that work for us. They're also just making an animal more comfortable. Uh, in our shelter environment, you know, students make beds for the animals, they make treats and toys, um, but volunteering is one of the biggest things. Also, we just need um, students to be advocate for animals because the big thing is is that um, in Frankfurt, where there's legislation going on all the time, it's not so much the uh, adults that make an impact, it's students that really have a voice because they're used to hearing us as adults talk. But when a student um, brings up an issue, they pay attention because it's very rare. So if teens and students can learn to be animal advocates, it's going to help um, all the animals in you know, the Kentuckiana area. Oftentimes, conversation depends on each person's individual perspective. Each perspective is different, and that's okay, but to communicate more efficiently, each person should focus on common topics, goals, and ideas, rather than his or her own point of view. Being open-minded and communicating without personal bias makes the conversation clearer and more efficient. In order to get to know you, I need to eliminate preconceptions about you, see you as a blank slate, and be willing to ask questions to understand you.